Hello booktube, I thought it's time for a tag video, so that's what you're gonna get. And this one is called the Contradictions Book Tag. And this was originally created by Daniela at Only If For A Page. And I was tagged by Sean the Book Maniac. I will leave links to both channels down below. Uh, question number one. I love this genre, but I didn't like this book. And again, do I need to make clear, clear that I really don't do this love and hate kind of thing? Because my reactions are more mild than that. So like and dislike would be my kind of verbs. Anyway, that's out of the way now. Um, I love this genre. I didn't like this book. So I love fantasy as a genre. But I didn't like um, the Dreamers series by David Eddings. I thought that was the most mediocre uh, fantasy series I've ever read. Um, yeah, dull as dishwater. Two, I rarely read this genre, but I liked this book. And so um, I immediately had, um, had a book in mind, but I'm not sure if this is a thriller or horror genre maybe it's both so anyway i rarely read thriller or horror uh, genre so i guess this hits two two birds with one stone excuse the morbid metaphor um i liked hannibal by thomas harris and that's a book about a you know a serial killer who likes cannibalism and question number three I love this trope, but I didn't like this book. And this question and the next one were quite difficult for me, actually, because I really don't, yeah, I really don't care about cliches, like, because, yeah, cliches exist for a re reason. They work if they are done well. And oh, so, yeah, it all depends on the execution. That's what I want to say. But for, you know, the sake of this tag, I had to choose something. So, I love this trope, didn't like this book. And the trope I chose is, you know, some kind of bad, badass monster who is being heroic. And uh, I didn't like Helsing. That's a manga series by Kota Hirano. And here we have some kind of vampire creature who you no know, kills bad guys and yeah it just it just didn't work there was just too much chaos and blood and violence and action but the plot and all the uh, drawings and you know panels they were just uh, poorly done in my opinion so the manga really didn't work and question number four I hate this trope but I loved this book and yeah, I don't like dream sequences but and again, one of my favorite books, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, has dream sequences. And they are used like uh, many Victorian uh, authors used uh, um, as a foreboding or foreshadowing kind of technique. Like if something happens in the dream, then something happens in the novel. Along, oh yeah, along those lines. So even a trope I don't like um, cannot always, you know, ruin a book for me. So yeah, Wuthering Heights, I love that, despite its dream sequences. Question number five. I love this author, but I didn't like this book, and I love. Virginia Woolf, 
but I didn't like Jacob's Room. I, I think that's her third novel, and she was definitely trying to do some kind of experimental novel there, like describe Jacob like through other characters, but never from Jacob's point of view or something, something like that. And it was an interesting experiment, but I don't think Wolf really had the writing uh, sort of skills uh, at that point to pull it off. Or maybe when I read the book like 10 years ago, I didn't have the reading skills to, <laughs> to read the book, so who knows? Maybe, yeah, it might be interesting to reread that novel one day. But for now, I just say I did it like Jacob's Room. And question number six. I previously disliked a book by this author, but I loved this book. And I disliked Grimus, or Grimus, by Salman Rushdie. And that is his debut novel. And yeah, it was just awful. But, uh, I was trying to be, I guess, deep philosophical and metaphysical and all of those things. But um, <laughs> he read like a pile of nonsense. However, his second novel, Midnight's Children, I guess it's second, second or third? I think it's second. Second novel, Midnight's Children, was, in my opinion, a masterpiece. And, yeah, I really don't use the word masterpiece lightly. But I think in the case of Midnight's Children, that is very deserved. It's very multi-layered and nuanced and, yeah, there's just everything. Good book. And seven. I love this cover, but I didn't like this book, right? I have some book to show you, and I love this cover. The book is called Lion Crosspoint, and this is by Masatsugu Ono, and yeah, really nice picture of octopus in the sea, and yeah, beautiful colors, and beautiful creature and yeah too bad the novel just didn't work can't ex actually even remember what this, what this is about so might read you a bit how does a shy traumatized boy overcome the shame anger and sadness that silence him in Lion Cross Point, celebrated Japanese author Masatsugu Ono turns his gentle pen to the mind of 10 year old Takeru who arrives at his family's home village amid a scorching summer, carrying memories of unspe unspeakable acts against his mother and brother. As Takeru befriends Mitsuko, his new caretaker, and Saki, his spunky neighbor, spunky? Spunky neighbor, he meets more of his mother's old friends, discovering her history and inching towards a new idea of family and home. All the while he begins to see a strange figure called Bunji, same name as a delicate young boy who mysteriously vanished long ago on the village's breathtaking coastline at Lion Cross Point. So yeah, like I didn't hate this book or I didn't actually even dislike this book. I just thought that this was quite meh, <laughs> very, very unforgettable. And yeah. That. Um, um, um. Question number eight. I don't like this cover, but I loved this book. So, I don't like <laughs> this cover. Like, uh, so the book is Lanny, author is Mac Max Porter. I really like this book, but the cover. Now look at that. <laughs> How uninspired is this? Yeah, and here we have some, you know, mysterious uh, 
creature called Papa Toothworth who you know who listens to listens to the villagers and hears everyone's stories and then there's some child uh, being kidnapped or banished vanishes and then whole kinds of other things going on here and it just baffles me how a story like that can have such an unimaginative boring cover and then I have another one for you so I don't like this cover for some reason I think it's too busy and it's trying to be too pretty and eye-catching to my taste but um, I know I'm very much in the minority with this like um, when this started to show up on booktube everyone was saying how beautiful the cover is and look how pretty you see it is and yeah I guess it has some elements of prettiness but yeah, it's just too too busy to my taste and <sighs> yeah anyway the book actually uh, yeah the actual book the story is very good though so can we have a little plot summary yeah there's some widow and she has a son and then they leave for Essex where there's some mythical Essex serpent apparently and then there's some love thing going on with a, a vicar anyway good book um, question number nine tag someone oh all right I am going to tag Jeremy V, I tag you, and who else? Scally dandling about the books. I don't know if you've done this. I want to tag you, and then uh, AJ Dunn. I'm going to tag you. So um, AJ Dunn reads and writes. It's the whole channel name there. So I tag you three, and yeah, or if there's someone out there who wants to do this, that I'm not gonna stop you from doing this. Anyway, that's all for this time. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, have you read any of these books? Let me know. And yeah, especially if anyone of you has has uh, read uh, Jacob's Room by Virginia Woolf, I'd like to hear some opinions. So that's all for this time, and back to my bookie activities, and see you soon.